Amen. Now, I know we live together. I'm sure she didn't ask me this week what I was going to be preaching on. Don't leave the building yet this morning. Um, she didn't know what I was going to be preaching on this morning. And so um, she didn't know I was going to sing My Redeemer. She didn't know I was going to be preaching on Jehovah Gael, who is our Redeemer. And that's our subject this morning. And But we would like to share with you this morning, by the goodness of the Lord, uh, the fact that Jesus has redeemed us from sin and from error. And so we want to start doing something a little bit, want to do something a little bit different this morning. I'm going to ask Daniel to come and help. Um, he's busy. Ask Andrew to come and help me here. Okay, ask Daniel to come and help me there. He worked all night. He's tired. This is a dollar bill. It used to be valuable. It's not so valuable too much anymore. I'm going to ask you to give everybody here a dollar bill. Now, I recognize that this is less valuable than it was even a year ago. A year ago, you could go into the Dollar Tree and buy a can of soup for a dollar. There's no tax on food except for candy and junk food like that. So you could go to the Dollar Tree and buy a can of soup for a dollar. Now it costs you a dollar and a quarter. And I'm gonna to try to work that into the sermon as we go along here. But I will tell you that it's kind of sad that in the last year, um, due to political leaders who don't care about us, that can of soup cost you one quarter more than it did last year at this time. And so, um, but, but I, I want you to be able to use this for anything you want to. You don't have to buy a can of soup if you don't want to. Um, but I want you to be able to use it because what I want you to do with it is to take it to some store at one point of time in your life, anytime you want to between now and then, and hand it to somebody knowing that they're going to give you back something for it. And I'll talk about that later on. I'm going to ask, if you will, to turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Isaiah, chapter number 43. Isaiah, chapter number 43. And I'd like to talk this morning for just a little while here about my Redeemer. Our Redeemer is the blessing of God has given us the hope of knowing that if the word of the Lord is true to us and we have believed the word of the Lord uh, is for us, that he is our Redeemer as well. And by the grace of the Lord, we have the hope of knowing he has um, done something marvelous for us that no one else can do. And by his grace this morning, he wants to promise us that if we will, we can share it with other people and he will do it for them as well as he has for us this morning. First of all, let's pray. Father, we thank you today for the opportunity of being here. It is our desire, Lord, and our delight that we might honor and glorify you in everything we say and do. We pray, Lord, that you help us to step out of the way, that the Holy Spirit may speak to those who are here and those who will watch this later. Allow the Spirit of the Lord to encourage them and allow them to know that you have paid a price for them because you love them. You knew all about us, Lord. We pray in Jesus' name that you will pay the price for them, have paid that price, that they will recognize that, Lord, and not let it go to waste. As we ask these things, Lord, we ask in Jesus' name, once again, that you'll help us to step out of the way, allow the Spirit of the Lord to minister in a way that will bring glory to the kingdom of God. As all things are impossible with God, we ask, Lord, that you'll do that for those who will watch this, perhaps, Lord, months down the road from this. We thank you, Lord. We ask once again that you'll honor us in the presence as we honor you, Lord, with our hearing, our receiving, and our obedience to the word. In Jesus' name, amen. In Isaiah chapter number 43, we would like to go into our Bible app this morning and saves our voice as well as gives you um, the, the chapter that we're going to be speaking on this morning. And so we want to um, listen to Isaiah chapter number 43. We'll start with verse number one this morning. If you'd like to follow along, this is the King James Version. And by the grace of the Lord, he's given us the hope of understanding that he wants to be our redeemer. And then we'll talk about what it means to be a redeemer. Page number, or Isaiah chapter number 43, verse number one. Isaiah chapter 43. But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel. Fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia and Seba for thee. Since thou wast precious in my sight, thou hast been honorable, and I have loved thee. Therefore will I give men for thee, and people for thy life. 
fear not, for I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from the east and gather thee from the west. I will say to the north, Give up, and to the south, Keep not back. Bring my sons from far, and my daughters from the ends of the earth, even every one that is called by my name. For I have created him for my glory. I have formed him, yea, I have made him. Bring forth the blind people that have eyes, and the deaf that have ears. Let all the nations be gathered together, and let the people be assembled. Who among them can declare this, and show us former things? Let them bring forth their witnesses, that they may be justified, or let them hear and say, It is truth. Ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that ye may know and believe me, and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. I, even I, am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. I have declared and have saved, and I have showed when there was no strange God among you. Therefore ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, that I am God. Yea, before the day was, I am he, and there is none that can deliver out of my hand. I will work, and who shall let it? Thus saith the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. For your sake I have sent to Babylon, and have brought down all their nobles, and the Chaldeans whose cry is in the ships. I am the Lord, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King. Thus saith the Lord, which maketh a way in the sea, and a path in the mighty waters, which bringeth forth the chariot and horse, the army and the power, they shall lie down together, they shall not rise. They are extinct, they are quenched as tow. Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing, now it shall spring forth, shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The beast of the field shall honor me, the dragons and the owls, because I give waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my people, my chosen. This people have I formed for myself. They shall show forth my praise. But thou hast not called upon me, O Jacob, but thou hast been weary of me, O Israel. Thou hast not brought me the small cattle of thy burnt offerings, Neither hast thou honored me with thy sacrifices. I have not caused thee to serve with an offering, nor wearied thee with incense. Thou hast brought me no sweet cane with money, neither hast thou filled me with the fat of thy sacrifices. But thou hast made me to serve with thy sins. Thou hast wearied me with thine iniquities. I, even I, am he that blotteth out thy transgressions for mine own sake, and will not remember thy sins. Put me in remembrance. Let us plead together. Declare thou that thou mayest be justified. Thy first father hath sinned, and thy teachers have transgressed against me. Therefore I have profaned the princes of the sanctuary, and have given Jacob to the curse, and Israel to reproaches. Amen. This passage of scripture this morning uh, describes what the Lord said he did for Israel. And he calls them at one point in time, Jacob. And then he calls them Israel. I think you know the story, but if you don't this morning, we will share it with you. Jacob was born as a twin with Esau to Isaac, who was Abraham's son. So it's Abraham, Isaac, Jacob and Esau. And Jacob uh, was not the firstborn, did not have the right to have the birthright, but through circumstances, we don't want to go into the whole story here, um, he received the birthright and the Lord changed his name later on to Israel. Every time you read in the Bible where God talks about him and uses his name as Jacob, you will find out that he's talking about he's walking in sinful ways. Every time you find his name in the, in the Bible and he's talking about Israel, meaning the prince with God, you will find the one that wrestled with the Lord uh, and and prevailed as far as the Lord said in his word, he changed his name to Israel and gave him a place of honor in the kingdom of God. I would share with you this morning that you and I are much like Israel and we're much like Jacob. 
Many times we know the right thing to do and we don't do it. And in that respect, we become like Jacob. We're walking away from the will of the Lord, doing things that get us in trouble. At other times, he sees us as the desire of his heart, walking in the word of the Lord as Israel and having a special place in his heart. As this passage of scripture says, you have honored, you found honor in me. I want to share with you this passage of scripture this morning. And first of all, uh, give you the meaning. This is according to uh, Google and Siri this morning, the meaning of the word redemption or redeem. It means to compensate for the faults or bad aspects of something to redeem oneself or do something that compensates for poor past behavior or beha or um, uh, performance or to atone or make amends for error or evil or to save someone from sin error or evil all those you can find out if you go to google you find that out um, uh, when you when you start looking it up i would share with you this morning that maybe an easier explanation for us to find with redeem is the idea that hey, we have something and we have bought it back i'll use that we redeemed it we, we bought it back uh, perhaps one of the best illustrations i ever heard on this was a little boy who with his dad uh, took a piece of wood just a uh, piece of a uh, lumber piece of two by four and began whittling on it and carving it and made a small boat uh, put a little mast on it and put a little sail on it and uh, took it down to the water down to the stream where he was and put it in the water to watch it float and um, as a little uh, as water came by real fast with half the little boy knowing it was going to happen that way the boat was flipped upside down and went on down the water before he could get it and it was lost first day he got it he had created it he had formed it he had made it, and the same day he lost it. And if you'll think about the sorrow that was in his heart, you find it also will probably find there's a little bit of joy in the story as he was going weeks later into the town that was close to their um, house. And as they're going to the town and passing a little shop, in the shop in the in the front window was his boat, the one he created, he formed, he made, and he lost. And there was a price tag on it because the man who found it brought it back put it in his shop and he was gonna sell it. And the little boy, uh, although he recognized that it was his, he had made it, it was his, he re also realized, I have to buy this back because there's a price tag on it now. And so he saved money up, uh, went back to that shop, bought that same boat back that had belonged to him, and in essence, had formed something, created it, made it, and then he had to redeem it because it was lost. That's what God did for Jacob and the children of Israel from Egypt, and from Babylon with Chaldeans, and from Rome later on. You're gonna find this out in the passage of scripture if you'll read there. Uh, one really remarkable scripture to me is found in the book of John, the eighth chapter, when Jesus is talking to the people of his day and time, and he says, um, if you are a slave, you've been a slave, God will set you free. The way he says it this way, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. And they argued with him saying, we are Abraham's seed, we've never been in bondage to anybody. And they must have forgotten the Egyptians in Egypt, the Assyrians in Assyria, the Babylonians in Babylonia, and the Romans at that, that same time they were talking in Rome, that they were all slaves to at the same time. And I would challenge you, when they were in those countries, they were slaves and God had redeemed them, except for Rome, had not been redeemed from Rome yet, but God had redeemed each one of them. You know the story about Moses as he brought the children of Israel out of Egypt. If you know the story about the Assyrians, you'll find out that God, by a great move of his hand, allowed the Spirit of the Lord to minister, and the Assyrians, he came back from Assyria, the Babylonians, when um, Cyrus the king allowed them to come back uh, with the Medes and Persians to come back to Jerusalem and have their uh, city back again. And even more recently, we'll talk about this, in 1948, uh, the British Empire, because at that time they controlled Jerusalem, gave Israel, and from one day not having a nation to the next day, as he said he would, he allowed them to be a nation. And so God knows how to redeem, and this passage of scripture, it talks primarily about how God did that for Jacob and for Israel. But let me read the scripture to you because this morning because it has something to do with us as well because by the grace of God he has called us to be his own we've used this illustration more than one time God has made a promise for a thousand generations to the Israelites and he will keep that promise those people who believe that the church has replaced Israel and now God is not nearly so interested in Israel as in the church does not read the scripture because the scripture makes it very plain that when God makes a promise he keeps the promise and his promise is I have called you to be my own and I'm going to make that promise clear for a thousand generations it hasn't come anywhere near a thousand generations at this point in time so in this passage of scripture we're going to find out later on how this applies to us because as God chose his people, his chosen people, and made them this promise, he's also told us in the book of John, you have not chosen me, I've chosen you. 
You are my chosen people, and by the grace of the Lord, as this passage of Scripture says, you are my witnesses, and by the blessing of the Lord, you and I today can be the witnesses of the people around us, that Jesus has redeemed us. Let me read the first few verses for you here in chapter number 43. But now saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee, I have called thee by thy name, by thy name, thou art mine. Now, I hope you have the hope this morning that that scripture fits you. You recognize that in the beginning, God formed you in your mother's womb. One passage of scripture in the book of Psalms, as the scripture says, the book of Job says that another, in another place there, you knit me together in my mother's womb and brought me forth and allowed me to have life. You gave me breath, you gave me mind, you gave me mobility. You allowed me to become a living being. And by the grace of God, we realize this morning, that's been the blessing and the grace of God. Especially now, and I probably shouldn't get on the subject, but at least I'm gonna touch, it, uh, touch on it here this morning. In a time when uh, millions of babies are aborted every year you have been blessed by God to allow have to have life to be allowed to have life because um, the situation has been uh, rampant in our nation and other, other nations around the world for quite a while and it's been by the grace of God that you were born at all it's been another blessing by the grace of God that you were born in the United States and not in China or India or Iraq or Russia or any other country in the world because we have much here and as remark remarkable as it is, uh, people around the world would like to be an American citizen. Sometimes American citizens are not as nearly so happy about it for whatever reason and I challenge you this morning, it's by the blessing and grace of God that you were born in this country. As this passage of scripture says, not only did I create you, form you in your mother's womb, not only did I form you by a allowing the Spirit of the Lord to be in your life, to make you the kind of person you are, to give you the hope of eternal life, to give you the blessings day by day in your life as you walk through this earth. Not only have I formed you, but I have redeemed you. I have redeemed you, and we start to think about being redeemed, if we'll think about it in terms of Jacob and Israel and the children of Israel, what he said was, you went into bondage, you went into slavery, and I redeemed you, I bought you out of that. And I'll challenge you this morning that while we may not think about the fact that we were ever in slavery, the Bible says this in the book of John, out of the mouth of the Lord Jesus Christ, don't you know that if you sin, you are a slave to sin? Book of Romans chapter number six and chapter number eight talk about the same kind of thing, knowing that when we yield our members, chapter six of Romans, when we real, yield our members to Satan, we become his servants, we are his slaves. And I will challenge you this morning with the idea, he is a cruel taskmaster. He will promise you everything and give you nothing. It is his desire to fool you and allow you to think, if you'll follow me and you'll walk with me, I will give you this and this and this and this, and finding out that if you look through examples after examples of the word of the Lord and from people you know around you, you will find out he never keeps his promise. And by the grace of God, he, God not being a cruel taskmaster, has said in more than one passage of the scripture, I'm gonna let you go now. If you decide you don't wanna serve me, I'm gonna let you go. And you'll find out what it's like to serve the people around you, to be a slave in the other countries. And as this passage of scripture brings to us this morning, not only did he allow us to realize that we were uh, uh, dead, the scripture says, in trespasses and sins, but he redeemed us. And the way he redeemed us is by allowing Jesus Christ to go to the cross. One passage of scripture in the fifth chapter of Romans tells us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus, when we had no desire whatsoever to think about him or concern myself with it, ourselves with him, went to the cross and paid our sin debt so that one day we can live forever with the Lord, being redeemed from sin. This passage of scripture, when it talks about God saying, I am the Lord, your redeemer, and this is the name we are dealing with this morning as we've been doing that long list of names, Jehovah Gael, he is saying, I am the one who redeems you. I am your redeemer. If we recognize that this morning, and I hope you do, I hope what, based on what I've just now told you, uh, you'll give the hope and receive the hope this morning in your heart that the Lord redeemed you, then you will recognize it the same way, he's the only one that could. I heard Charles Stanley make this statement one, one time, it's been many years ago, and I'm going to repeat him this morning at the same time, uh, in the same way that he said it. He said, wasn't God stupid, had my attention immediately, wasn't God stupid to make Jesus go to all the suffering of the cross and before the cross and be crucified on the cross and die and go into a tomb, wasn't God stupid for making that happen when there are so many different ways to be saved? 
And he made the statement because the reality is, according to the word of the Lord, there's no other name under heaven whereby men might be saved, book of Acts chapter 2, than the name of the Lord Jesus. And I challenge you this morning to recognize that Jesus said, as we quoted the scripture last week, I am the way, I am the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. When we come to Jesus, we find out what he said is, I am the good shepherd, I lay down my life for the sheep. I have power to lay it down. I have power to pick it up again. And what he said is, I have laid down my life, and I'm going to make a real person this morning. I laid down my life for you. It's by the grace of God that what he said is, I know that you were prepared, perhaps not in your heart, but prepared by life to die for your sins. The Bible says the, sin that's, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. And in this passage of scripture, we were reminded of the idea that we were set for death. The death sentence had been passed on us because we committed sin. And I hear this quite often, so I'm going to deal with it as well. Um, I don't think I should have to deal with the sin of Adam. Let me, let me answer that. I've got a feeling, a strange feeling, that if you don't think about Adam's sin at all, and you're honest with yourself, you can probably find one or two in your own life that you'd have to die for. And I would challenge you to take a step further. You might find that one or two, not when you were younger, not a long, long time ago, maybe in the last week, maybe in the day. You and I, as we are in human flesh, as we're in flesh and a human um, understanding, many times fail and fall into sin. And the scripture makes it very plain, the soul that sinneth it shall die. Jesus took my place, and if you will, he took your place on the cross, so that we were redeemed by him, and no longer have to fear that. And then he gave us another promise in verse number two, as the scripture says, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they will not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle, upon you for I am the Lord thy God the Holy One of Israel thy Savior I'd like to challenge you with this thought this morning and bring it personally many years ago we were in Newport and at the beach my sister and my wife and I who was my girlfriend at the time but my my family they got caught in a riptide and didn't know I was in a riptide when it first happened but all at once I realized I was being dragged away from the shore out into the deeper water and had no control my sister and my wife watched me and later on said it looked like you could stand up anytime you wanted to uh, the fact of the matter was there was a drop-off right there and I was about 12 feet of water and not only could I not stand up on the bottom I couldn't get out of the riptide now while they didn't know that I was caught in this riptide and literally, because I wasn't a real strong swimmer, at the point of drowning and not knowing what to do because I was in the water, praise God there was a lifeguard on duty, and he knew. He saw me and recognized what was happening, and as they're standing watching, he runs by them, jumps into the water with his little flotation device, and swims out to me, and just about the time there was a jetty there, just about the time I got ready to try to get up on the jetty, he said, don't do that. Now, I will tell you when he said that, it first of all shocked me because I was kind of in the moment trying to stay alive, kind of in the moment. And when he said, don't do that, I didn't recognize that he had been there. And so I was willing to do anything at that point to get out of it. And so he said, if you step on those rocks, the barnacles and things uh, on, the, on the rocks themselves, the crustaceans that are attached themselves to the, rock, the rocks will rip you to pieces. They're just like razor blades, they'll tear you up. He said, hold on to the, the flotation device and just go with me, don't fight with me, okay? And so rather than doing what I wanted to do, go back to the shore, he went out into the water and he swam all the way around the jetty with me holding on to the, the flotation device and I was kicking but I wasn't doing much else when I did that and I was kicking and we go all the way around the jetty and when we got around the jetty the water brought us right back up to the shore where I wanted to be I found out then on this passage of scripture when you pass through the waters I will be with you that day Jesus was with me because not only did the lifeguard see not only did he know what to do, but the Lord put his hand on me, allowed me that day to find out this is how you get out of them. Now, I'll tell you this morning, uh, quite honestly, I don't care to get in one again to find out how much I learned. I'd just soon be out of it. I'd just soon never have to face it again. But this passage of scripture brings us the hope of an understanding. When the cares of this life begin to overwhelm you and you are flooded by them and you are drowning in them, the Bible says, I, your redeemer, I have been here to make sure that the waters don't overflow you that the rivers as this passage of scripture says do not overflow you and by the grace of god that he saves us from them you and i if we look at this in in relationship with our lives day-to-day -day, uh, living and the things we go through day-to-day -day, there are many times when we become overwhelmed with circumstances 
Uh, this last week we had uh, four or five things that needed to be done right now. I know you know what I'm talking about. Four or five things that needed to be done right now. And the fact of the matter is, if you have four or five, and they're pretty big things as it was in this case, you can't do them all at once, all at once right now. And so uh, one thing puts on, gets put on the back shelf there, the other in the back burner there, and pretty soon you do what you can. Uh, that has to be done at that moment. But I praise God that by the grace of God, he delivered. And from a moment that I felt like I was being overwhelmed by all this stuff that I couldn't get done, the Lord allowed by his grace and his spirit and his love to show me, if you'll rest in me, I'll take care of them. And he did very well. This passage of scripture says, when you go through the fire, you will not be burned. And then he says, why? And I want to challenge you this morning with the most important passage, the most important part of this scripture. And he says it more than one time here. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel. If you find the words, I am the Lord, you're going to find them in verse number 3. You're going to find them in verse number 11. You're going to find them in verse number 15. I am the Lord. Um, and then thus saith the Lord, he says later on, he says, I am the Lord, the Holy One of Israel. And I'll challenge you this morning as I have before. Whenever the Bible tells you something twice, it's to remind you that this is important. God didn't forget what he said the first time. When it happens more than twice in one book, it's even more important. And when it, in this passage of Scripture, it happens three times in one chapter. What the Lord is trying to tell you very easily is, I am the Lord. Trust me, I am the Lord. I will take care of you. If you remind yourself who he is, you will find out that he is the Lord of all the Lord of everything. He is the great power of God, omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent. He wants to handle every situation that you will trust him handling. And this passage of scripture, he says, I am the Lord, your holy one, the creator of Israel, your king. Now, one passage of scripture in the New Testament tells us that a king was there and the men who were, he, was, he was supposed to be ruling over said, we will not have him rule over us. It's a long story there, and I challenge you to go look for it. But I'll challenge you this morning that you and I, as children of God, need to recognize that the very best king we can have is King Jesus. Because by his grace, he's promised us in this passage in Scripture, I've redeemed you. Now, he not only redeems us from sin, so that we don't have to worry about one of these days being separated from him, but he dreams, redeems us from sickness. He redeems us from the fire trial of this life from the drownings and the sorrows of this life, if we'll look to him and call upon him, the God of Israel, and recognize he is the Jehovah Gael who has redeemed us from those things we look at. This passage, what those things we're going through. In this passage of scripture, I want to challenge you with the idea that what the Lord says is, remind yourself of who I am. Remember who I am. I want to close with this passage in the last verse, and in the last verses of chapter number 43, when he says, you have not brought me, verse number 20, uh, 23, first of all, 22, you have not called upon me, O Jacob, but you have been weary of me, O Israel. You have not brought me the small cattle and the burnt offerings, neither have you honored me with sacrifices. I have not caused thee to serve with an offering, nor wearied thee with incense. Thou hast brought me no sweet cane with money, neither hast thou filled me with the fat of thy sacrifices, but thou hast made me to serve with thy sins, and thou hast wearied me of thy iniquities. What he's saying here is all the things I told you I wanted you to do in bringing me a sacrifice here, bringing me a sacrifice for this and that, you've done none of them. And yet you want me to, to be a blessing to you. Yet you want to pray and have me answer that prayer. And then he says why he does, by marvelous grace, verse number 25, I, even I, am he that blotteth out thy transgressions for my own sake, and will not remember thy sins. Put me in remembrance, let us plead together, declare thou that thou mayest be justified. Thy first father hath sinned, and thy teachers have transgressed against me. Therefore, I have profaned the prince of the sanctuary and have given Jacob to the curse and Israel to reproaches. That's why he said you're in trouble today. But now he's telling us this morning, in this passage of scripture, he's told Israel that day and time, I have blotted out your transgressions. I've forgiven your sins. And you and I have this opportunity of believing what he said when he said, I created you. I formed you, I made you what you are. I allowed the environment of your, of your growing up, the things you learned while you were growing up, the things in, as a child and later on as an adult, how I taught you, the things you learned from them. I formed you. You were lost because you went the wrong way and I redeemed you. 
I heard this before and I want to challenge you again with the same thought. You and I are in a situation today as it was on the radio one day when I was listening and a minister there was saying, if you've ever had children and you did your very best to tell them the right thing to do and they went the wrong way, I'd like you to pay real close attention to me. He said, remind yourself that the very best father of all had two children, put them in the Garden of Eden paradise, and they both betrayed and went the wrong way. And if you'll think of that, you'll think of the sorrow that's involved in that. You'll probably find sorrow for yourself as well as for Adam and Eve. But if you remind yourself of the story, you'll find out that what God said is, I have redeemed you. And by the grace of the Lord, he blotted out their transgressions as he blots out our transgressions and has saved us and caused us and allowed us to be a children of the children of God, called by his name, so it is his desire to work in our lives and allow the Spirit of the Lord to minister in us in the way that he can and he only can. This passage of scripture is for us this morning. If we remind ourselves, I am Jehovah Gael, who has redeemed you, not just from sin, but from the sorrows of this life, by the grace of the Lord, he gives us hope of knowing what to do tomorrow. He's blotted out our transgressions. He has healed our bodies. And if we, by the grace of the Lord, will remember Old Testament Isaiah, New Testament, First Peter, he tells us, by his stripes, you were healed. It's already done. Jesus paid the price. He redeemed us from our sickness. And I challenge you this morning, recognize him for who he wants to be in your life, the God, the Redeemer, the I am of Israel. And if you'll challenge yourself in that way, you'll find out he's always there to do that pleases unto him. Praise the Lord for it this morning. I'm going to ask our ushers to come and um, do the communion with us this morning. This is communion morning. We do this once, once a month, obviously, first Sunday of the month. Paul tells us, talking about the story we know as the Last Supper, Paul tells us, I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. The same night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, and he broke the bread and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. As we read the scripture and recognize what Jesus said, he said, Except you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no part of me. What he's talking about is this ritual we are doing right now that should be more than just a ritual. It should be the promise of God that this body was broken for us. This blood was shed for us. And by the grace of God, when we do this, we fulfill the word of the Lord so that we have a part of the Lord Jesus fulfilling his word. When we participate with the blood, that example of the cup that we have here, we are fulfilling the word of the Lord Jesus when he said, when you do this, do this in remembrance of me. And I challenge you this morning that we're living in a time when Jesus is being forgotten around the world. Sadly, the people in the world many times have never known him, but Christians have forgotten who he is. They've forgotten that he saved them, that he redeemed them, that he is for them their hope of eternity, and they are walking away. One passage of scripture, the Lord Jesus talked in the book of Luke. He says, when the Son of Man returns, will he find faith on the earth? And I challenge you this morning, you and I are testimonies this morning as this passage of scripture in Isaiah chapter 43 tells us we are his witnesses. When we participate in the communion service, we tell the world around us, we tell the angels who are watching, we, talk, we tell the demons who may be uh, surrounding, we tell them we believe in Jesus, we believe in the, the Last Supper, we believe in this sacrament of the body and the blood of the Lord, and by his grace, he has saved us, he has healed our bodies. We have hope in him. I'm going to ask you to stand with me this morning. The scripture says, after he gave thanks, he said, take eat, this is my body. And Father, we thank you today for the love of the Lord Jesus Christ who gave himself in our place. There is no way we can understand fully or perfectly what has happened and the pain that Jesus went through because we weren't there. We see pictures or movies or read about it. And while we do, our imagination might reach out to try to understand. But Father, we recognize in our limited ability, there's no way for us to fully understand the price that Jesus paid 
before the cross, at the post, and at the cross, allowing his body to be brutalized so that we might have healing. I thank you today for this body that was broken for us, recognizing we are beneficiaries of the blessing, the love of God, as he gave his body to be horrifically brutalized so that we might find healing. I'm thankful for it this morning as I participate in this part of the service. I thank you and praise you again for the love of Jesus in going to the post and taking stripes for me. In Jesus' name. Will you take the body with me, the bread with me this morning? The Bible says, after the same manner also he took the cup. And Father, I thank you today for that perfect, pure, innocent one who came and lived among mankind, sinless, perfect, taking my place, a sinful person, imperfect in every way. I recognize today that as I was guilty and deserved to have punishment, that Jesus, guiltless, took that punishment for me. And I'm thankful for today. I praise you for the love of God in Jesus Christ, as God so loved the world that he gave his only son. And this morning it is my desire to praise and honor, to thank you for the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, the blood of the New Testament, that by the grace of God this morning I have hope knowing my sins have been blotted out, my transgression is gone. I've been redeemed by the Jehovah Gael, recognizing this morning I've been redeemed because of his love this morning, called and adopted into the family of God with sins blotted out. I praise you for it in Jesus' name. Will you take the cup with me this morning? I'd like you to sing the song, first verse and chorus with me of a song we sing quite often. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Jesus makes that promise. Sing it with me if you will this morning. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Father, I thank you today for the blood of Jesus, my way, the only way, to be redeemed and get to heaven to see the Father. You promised us he is the way, the truth, and the life, and that no man comes to the Father except through him. I ask in Jesus' name that you allow the Spirit of the Lord to help us to draw closer to our Redeemer, recognizing that redemption is made possible when it is accepted by the redeemed one. That if the offering has been given but never accepted, the person has lost out that decided not to accept. I ask in Jesus' name that you allow the Spirit of the Lord to minister to us so that we will tomorrow, today, next week, help us to be reminded that we've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. In Jesus' name, let it to be our word of testimony. We thank you, Lord, as we ask all these things in Jesus' name for your honor, Lord, and your glory. Amen. God bless you. We're glad you're here this morning. Shake hands be friendly.